church. Yeah. Yeah.
start reading in verse 8, and we will read through to verse 12. You know, the Bible tells us about that New Testament church. It says that they gave themselves faithfully to certain things, to the apostles' doctrine, uh, to prayer, and uh, to fasting and all that. But it also adds something else in there, to fellowship and the breaking of bread. They gave themselves faithfully to what we were doing this morning. Isn't that awesome? We're good at that. Yeah, we are. We are really good at that. And, uh, and you yeah, know, I've become a well-rounded individual because of that. <laughs> Rory, was that you I heard laughing at him? No problem. Amen. God is so good, isn't it? Yeah. Second Samuel chapter 23, we are going to start in uh, verse 8. These be the names of the mighty man whom David had. Now understand that this is coming down to David's last days. And, and so it's going to talk about some of the things that, that David talked about or that he thought were important. He talks about that in the prior verses of chapter 23 and how God had placed within his life an everlasting covenant, covenant and ordered in all things and sure. And he said, for this is my salvation. Then he goes on and, and David talks about, or the Bible talks about, those that were prominent in David's army. And it specifically mentions three. Three that were at the head of, of virtually everything else that uh, all the rest of his army that was down below that. And uh, so we're just going to take a look at and read about those three and it starts off. These be the names of, of the mighty man whom David had. The Tachmanite. See, I'm pretty good at it, aren't I? Yeah. See how I do with some of the, the ones later on. That sat in the, in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Elzenite. He lifted up a spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo. I don't know why you'd call your son Dodo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Have any of you ever been tempted? I know, but afterwards, you know, down the line, after you've come to live with them for a while, maybe, but not at the outset. You have such high hopes for your children at the outset. You know, you don't think they're they're going to, you know, live up to that name. Maybe it's you, you. son of Dodo. The, whoops, I dropped my cane. The Alevite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. Now look at this fellow. This fellow is amazing. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the sword and the Lord brought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. In other words, they didn't have to fight. All they had to do was just go collect the spoils. Pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. yeah. Amen. I don't even have to fight. I was like, I'd go there and just follow this guy around, and I'll just get all the spoils. Amen. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Ararite. I did pretty good with that one too. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, and there was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines, and he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, slew the Philistines, and the Lord brought a great victory. I want to preach to you for a little while today that there is some things worth fighting for. Amen. There's some things worth fighting for. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we just love you so much. I thank you, Lord, for your word. God, your word has just spoken to our hearts and changed our lives, Jesus. And I pray again today, Lord, as we, God, are within the sound of your preaching, Lord, that you will just open hearts and ears and minds, Jesus. For I know, Lord, according to your word, that we are saved by the foolishness of preaching. God, speak to each one of us today. I pray, Lord, that you will touch each mind and each heart. God, that you will draw each one to you in Jesus' precious name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. This is a little, you notice that? It's because the little felt thing that goes over the top of it got ripped and fell off. So uh, we'll just go with it, but if you uh, just will try and get ourselves another one, it can't be that expensive, I wouldn't think. Amen. Amen. Everybody smile. Some of you are not smiling, or if you are smiling, 
I feel sorry for those that live with you. <laughs> Amen. I believe that you know it's a strange thing. We live in we live in a time when it seems like, and and Canadians are are typically. I'm going to say this carefully. Not as patriotic as some other countries are. Yeah, right. And and so when it comes to, I mean, we look backwards with pride at times to our record in the Second World War. Uh, we look back with pride at some of the places that we've been involved in uh, throughout time in this world and where we've been in or have been involved in some of the wars that have gone on. And we felt like the things that we were involved in were worth fighting for, and that's why we became involved. Uh, there was a lot of pressure back during the Second World War, not so much for Canada. Canada got involved as soon as Britain did because we were part of the Commonwealth. Uh, but there was a lot of pressure in the United States for them not to get involved in the Second World War. And among those that were against it were the Wright brothers, whom you are familiar with, and, and many others uh, that did not want the U.S. to become involved in that war. And, uh, and we're thankful today that they did. Uh, because it changed the tide of the war when the U.S. did become involved and uh, changed the direction of that warfare. Who knows what our world would look like right now if it had not been so. Right. If Hitler was in charge and, and that regime was in charge of the countries that we live in now, how different that would be right. for all of us to live in. I have looked back and, and I have a little different opinion about some things than maybe some do. And uh, oftentimes have been criticized and, uh, and sometimes argued with in respect to whether or not we should be involved in this day and age in the various wars that happen in our world. And uh, we are very, uh, uh, I don't know what the best word to describe us is today, but we almost seem to be very accepting yeah. of things that go on in our world. I have, I read the news quite, quite faithfully. Uh, usually just about every day and, and some of it I don't even read I read the headline and I don't read the rest because I really do not want to know the details yeah. of all the things that went on right. and, and I've read sometimes that uh, that there have been people that have been abused those that have been mistreated some people have been killed while others stood by and watched and did nothing yeah. and I have seen to my dismay almost the the reduction of the willingness to stand for anything in our world yes. almost becomes so prevalent that it seems like even in the church we won't stand for anything anymore yeah we're afraid to mention that we are against anything or for anything that might be positive for the fear that we might be considered to be a little too radical for our world system in this day and age and it bothers me it bothers me that we're not willing to fight for anything anymore. Right. Paul said this in the New Testament. He said, fight the good fight of faith. And, and I, I struggle with that because my wife knows me now. I've become a whole lot more gentle in my older age. But I used to love to argue. Yeah. Uh, so fighting was never never a problem with me. I, verbally, I, would, I, would just, I enjoyed a good fight. Yeah. Amen. And if there's anybody else here with me, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I see some of you nodding. <laughs> uh, you're just the same way, right? Yeah. But I have found out that fighting for the faith is not being disagreeable, but it's fighting for the faith in love. And there is a difference. Yeah. But you know something? I feel like there are some things sometimes that are worth standing in the middle of a field and saying, you know what, enemy, you're not going to take this right. away. Right. Right. I don't care what you do. I'm going to stand here. And I'm not going to leave this place. You are going to be that's going to turn tail and run from me because I'm not going to lay down and let you take this. Right. And uh, I uh, have, uh, I, with great dismay in my life, have seen churches that have begun to compromise on things that are right. Yeah. 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 And true. Yes. I, it bothers me. I don't know if it bothers the rest of you. Yes. But at denominational churches, even some of our own churches, won't stand up and say that they're for the family anymore. Traditional family, a man and woman with children, if, if God allows them that, that, that churches aren't willing to stand for that anymore. Yeah. That bothers me. Yeah. I'm dismayed sometimes that, that churches have compromised on, on women having abortion and they won't stand for that. That bothers me yeah. that we in this day and age are so excited of what they tell us that we should be like, that we've forgotten what the Word tells us and are willing to stand on it and say, that's not right. Yeah. I think it's about time the church stood. Yeah. I think it's about time we stood like these three mighty men and said, this is what, I don't care what they're telling us we need to be like. 
about ourselves and our, our way of life and the way that we live and that we should not lay down and just accept it because others think it should be so. Right. Because in the end result, we're going to find out that it probably has changed them irreparably in some areas. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's true. Amen. I like to have revival. I want God to give us revival. Amen. But can I tell you something? We don't want to just have people in the church and have great multitudes that haven't been changed by the power of God. Amen. I'm not willing to compromise what we believe and the things that we stand for just so we can have a bigger crowd. I would rather stand for truth and have a smaller crowd and go with what everybody wants us to accept and have this place full and maybe buy a new building so we can see them all. We are so in love with mega churches that we're willing to try and be one at the cost of all we believe to be true and right. right. There's something wrong with that. Something not right about that. Because the Bible still tells us that narrow is the way, and straight is the gate that leads to everlasting life. Broad is the way. And there are many that are going to be on that broad highway that leads to destruction. That's right. Does it tell you that the majority of people are going to find this life to be what they want? That's right. Much less enter their end. Yeah. You want to know why they won't? Because they're too weak to stand on the yeah. things that the Bible says. Yeah. When you've got something inside of you that says, hey, I'm a man or a woman of God. I am not going to compromise what I believe and see and know to be right and true. I am going to stand for it. No matter what comes my way, I'll tell you something. You found that narrow way. Amen. Boy, Elijah went and preached all by himself. He thought there was nobody else that stood with him. He went up on that mountain and had that battle with all the prophets of the grove and the prophets of Baal. And I'll tell you something. When it was all said and done, there was not one of them left, left alive because one man stood and says, I'm not going to change. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I was just reading that recently. He turned and asked all the children of Israel, is there anybody that believes this? And nobody said anything. Yeah. They all just were quiet and silent. But Elijah stood. Let the God who is God answer by fire. Right. Let the God who is God answer by fire in our lives and in our services. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Don't sit back and, and just be content with lukewarm services and right. lukewarm worship and lukewarm praise. Amen, amen. Well, this last guy that we saw in Scripture, Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herorite. Philistines were gathered together in a troop, and there was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. Now, lentils, are, by the best of my knowledge, are beans, right? Yeah. Yeah. Beans, and yeah, something like that, some, some form of bean. I don't even like beans. What's that? Well, I do like chili, but that's well the only way I like it. But he's standing there in the middle of this field, and, and you know what? What we may consider to be something not of any great value at this point in time in our life, when our children start growing up and our grandchildren start growing up, we're going to look at it and say, boy, I'm glad I stood. Right. Absolutely. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. I'm glad I took a stand for something. Amen. I'm glad that I said that I was going to live for God. Right. I'm glad that I chose to, yeah. to raise my children to know God. I'm glad that I told them that there is one God. Yeah. I'm glad that I showed them a salvation plan and let them know what that salvation plan was. I'm glad I let them know yes. that they needed to live for God for themselves, for their wives, for their yes. husband, for their children's sake. I'm glad I stood for that. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so this fellow, he stood in the midst of a bean field when a troop of Philistines came and tried to take it away and everybody else around him was running for their lives and, and uh, going and hiding in the caves and behind rocks and wherever they went to. And here's this one man standing out in the middle of the field with a sword while the Philistines are charging at him across that bean field. Yeah. Have you ever felt that way spiritually? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever stood somewhere and thought, man, everybody at work is, is saying, well, how can you believe that stuff? How? Because the Bible says so. Right. Because this is what the Word of God says. I'm going to stand and I'm going to defend that. Yeah. Amen. So he stood, Shama stood, and, and man, he just swinging this way and swinging that way, and there's blood flying on beans all over the place. And, and <laughs> not 
going to let them have that field of beans. Right, right. I don't understand it. Have the beans. But he's not going to let them do that. And you know something? There's some things that we need to consider valuable enough in our right, lives. Right. That's to right. stand and say, I'm not going to change. That's right. Amen. We need to believe in the family structure today. Yes. We need to defend it at all costs. Yep. Let me be plain, plain and blunt and yes. what was the word you used? Not sweet. <laughs> all the men stand up. <laughs> I'm not going to be sweet. All of you, let me tell you something. God expected that you would lead your families. Yes. God expected that you would be the head of your households. Yes. And that you would, and those of you that aren't married will one day be married. I see Brian smiling at me here. <laughs> and I'm going to hustle get Brother Nicholas. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's going to come a day if God tarries and you're married that God's going to expect you to leave. Right. God's going to expect you to stand up and say, this is what we're going to believe. This is what we're going to stand on. And we're not going to just compromise. We're not going to lay down just because it's the easiest thing to do. Gentlemen, you need to stand up and be counted and say, I'm going to be a man of God. I'm going to lead my family, my wife and my children, and I will not compromise. You can be seated. Oh, all the ladies are all looking worried now, aren't they? All the ladies, 12 and up, stand. Listen, we need to stand for some things. There's some things that are important. The Bible tells you that you need to love your husbands. And that you need to submit yourselves to your husbands. As unto the Lord. You can look around and say, my husband isn't spiritual enough. The Bible does not specify that. All it says is submit yourselves unto your husbands and the spiritual leaders that God has before you. You need to, to create a household and a home where God is going to be the center of that home. Right, right. Ladies, I don't know. My mom, the reason I believe that I'm living for God today, I would hear my mama praying in the middle of the night for her sons. Right. She never, ever stopped praying for her children. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night, my, my bedroom was downstairs, and I'd hear my mom upstairs praying. Yeah. God, you've got to save Ron. You've got to save Murray. You've got to yeah. save Alan. You've got to, oh, you've got to touch my children. Yeah. And uh, she just never, ladies, let me tell you something. You need to travail for your husband, for your children. You need to make sure that you're there on your knees, and you need to create a home where it's going to be a place where when people come in, they're going to know that there is a this yeah. Home. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. The household is your responsibility. It's his responsibility to get up and earn the living. That's right. You may be seated. Thank you, ladies. Gentlemen, it's your responsibility to earn a living and to supply for your family. You don't have to ask whether it's the will of God for you to have a job. Right. It's written in the word for you to support your family. Say, Brother Neville, you're way off on. No, there's some things I need to preach about. Right. Hallelujah. We need to stand for some things in this day and age. The world tells us it has to change. We're all equal. Yeah, we're equal. God took the woman from, from Adam's side, meant to be beside him. But God still meant there to be different positions in that family, different responsibilities within that family. And God set it down so it would be so. Right. We need to stand for those things. Amen. You need to stand for those things. All of the, everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stand and defend your family at all costs. Yes. Right. Gentlemen, pray with your children. Yes. Amen. Pray with your grandchildren. Yes. Pray with them that, that not only... I was so impressed when I was down with my, my daughter and her husband and their children are just young. and oh, We don't even know what they're praying right now. But every night, Chad goes in there and he prays with his children. And God, that they would, my child, whichever one it is, whether it's Aiden or Gracie, that Gracie would live for you all right. the days of her life. Right. Yep. We need to stand. Yep. In the middle of a field and defend everything that is valuable and everything that, that we see around us that God has placed us with blessing. And we need to defend it and make sure we're staying faithful to it. 
Amen. We need to stay faithful to holiness and yes. modesty. Yes. When the Holy Ghost was first poured out back on the turn of the century, back in, uh, uh, I'm on, 1900, sorry, Topeka, Kansas. And the Holy Ghost began to be poured out into all the churches, or not all the churches, but began to be poured out of some of the churches that were around there. I want you to know that when God did so, He, he came to those churches that believed in holiness. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We think that we can change it, and if you start looking around you at some of the charismatic churches that have had a moment of the Holy Ghost and have lost it over time, you'll know that it's still important that we hold on to holiness. That's right. And I'm using that in the general sense, so I hope you understand that. Things that are ours that we need to need to stand and defend. We need to make sure that we're defending those things that are important to our services. Yes, right. We need to defend God. Yes. Yes. The Bible says that Jesus, when Nicodemus came to him by night and began to uh, compliment him, that Jesus cut through all of that and told Nicodemus, you must be born again of water and of spirit and you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Right. Went on to say that he had to be born of water and of spirit or would not be able to even see the kingdom of God. Can I tell you, people that tell you how to live for God that haven't been born again, they don't even see clearly into That's the right. kingdom. That's and sometimes we've allowed them to dictate to us what it is that we should be like in this. What is wrong with us? We should be looking at those that have been born again that will have insight into what the kingdom of God is about. And those are the ones that we should be going to and saying, Elder, I need to ask of you, it's what's right, what's wrong, what should I live by, how should I live? But instead, we're willing to take the, the advice of those that haven't been born again. Come on, let's stand for the word of God. Stand for doctrine that was first delivered to the saints. Amen. All that it means to us and all that we preach. I have found myself at times almost compromising on this. Wanting to preach faith and wanting to preach belief and wanting to preach, well, if you just accept the Lord because it's so popular and so common. But I tell you, you still need to be born again. Amen. You want the grace of God in your life? You need to be born again of water and of spirit or you are not entering into that kingdom. Right. Right. I've got four or five people that believe that tonight. Amen. 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 If Jesus said it, the song goes, I believe it. That's, right. that's all settled now. That's right. Jesus said, you've got to be born again. He said to Peter back in Matthew, he said, uh, when Peter told who he was, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus turned and said to him, says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to him, but my Father which is in heaven. And unto you is going to be the keys, given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. He said it this way. He never said what was already bound in heaven is going to be bound on earth. He said to Peter, whatsoever things you bind on earth are going to be written in heaven. This is the way it's going to be, Peter. Whatsoever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. Not the other way around. So when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost after the Holy Ghost was poured out, he stood up and man, they, they received the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. People gathered around thought they were drunk. He said, we're not drunken as you suppose. This is about the third hour. Uh, well, let me tell you something. You must have what we have. This is not drunkenness. This is the Holy Ghost. This is what was prophesied back in Joel that God said that he was going to do. What you hear today is that Holy Men and brother, what shall we do? Repent of your sins. Yes. There is no salvation without repentance. Right. There is no change of life without repentance. God can't move any further into your life to give you the Holy Ghost or anything else until you repent. Right. Except you likewise will repent, you shall perish. Repentance is not just telling God you're sorry. 
Repentance is looking at your life and saying, I don't want to ever live that way again. Right. I'm going to turn around. I hate the way that I live. I want to change my life. Turn around and walk the other way. Amen. I'm get rid of my cigarettes and the booze yes. and all the rest of the yes. stuff along the way. I'm going to say, God, I'm going to walk that direction. I'm not going to walk that way. Amen. Preach it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time we stood. Amen. Amen for these things. We need to stand for the belief that the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential in our lives. For Paul said it this way to the Corinthian church. He said, if you do not have the Spirit, then you do not belong to Him. You are not of His. If you read it in the Amplified, it's very, very clear about that. That if you do not have the Holy Ghost in your life, you don't belong to Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. I make no apology for right. what the Bible says. Right. You've got to have the Holy Ghost in your life. If you don't have the Holy Ghost in your life, seek for the Holy Ghost in your life. Ask God what you need to do to receive the Holy Ghost, and then stick with it and believe that God's promised He will fulfill in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Too sweet, too long. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Amen. We need to stand for some things. And afterwards, we need to understand that just having gotten to that place is not good enough. Right. But I've got to keep living for God. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can't stop living for God just because I've received salvation right. and believe that once saved, always saved. Goodness sakes, Paul said, I've got to keep preaching lest I also become a castaway. He thought it was possible for him to lose his salvation. Right. Even after having received the Holy Ghost. After being baptized in Jesus' name. After that experience he had. He thought it was still possible for him to lose his salvation. If he did not keep going onward. Amen. And we need to keep going onward. We need to keep living for God. And uh, believe that God will help us every step of the way. If we trust Him. And have faith that He will do so. The Bible says... That the work that he started in us, he will be faithful to complete it. Yes. Let's stand together, shall we? Hallelujah. We need to stand not only for families in this day and age. We need to stand and fight for our families. Amen. 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 We need to stand and fight for, for those things that, that were so important to us at the outset of our salvation. Yes. We need to make sure that we're not, not compromising on the faith and belief that this salvation plan, this apostolic doctrine is as essential now as it was over 2,000 years ago for salvation. It's not going to change just because the majority don't believe in it anymore. It's not going to change. It's still going to be right here. Until this dispensation ends, you still got to apply yourself to what Jesus said and Peter said and Peter prayed. And we need to live holy and righteous lives. After that, we have gotten the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I know, I know, I know. People will tell me, Brother Nichols, that's just works. We can't work our way into salvation. There is a difference between works trying to achieve salvation and doing the right thing because the one that has saved you, you love him so much that you want to change your life to suit what he wants you to be. That's not works. she'll stay married to me. I'm doing it because I love her and I know that it pleases her. It changed me when I got married. Right. It'll ch change me when I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm living differently, not because the Bible says that I have to to achieve salvation, but because God has given me salvation and this is the way that He wants me to live. church services. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 I'll tell you something. It is, it is, musicians, if you would come, please. The enemy would rather you sit there and watch everybody else worship God. Yep. Yeah. Or just a few. You know, there's always a few that will, will worship God. There's always a few that will shout and some that will run and some that will dance and, and the rest of it watch. Yeah. And that's what the enemy wants, you to be a watcher. That's right. Don't you think it's time you stood? That's right. 
Don't you think it's time that, that you worship God and praise God the way God wants you to do it? And you stop sitting there silent and quiet. And, and listen, when David came back and he brought that Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem. Yeah. My goodness, here is the king. And they're bringing it back. And they failed the first time because they did it according to man's ways rather than God's way. And so God struck us a dead and they stopped and they put the ark there and David went back and he called that place a breach against Gaza because he thought God made a mistake. And he went back and he asked God, what's going on? I'm trying to do the right thing here. I'm trying to bring the ark, which is the type of the Holy Ghost, back to Jerusalem where it belongs. And here you've gone. You've struck us a dead. And look, at you've made this mistake. And... <laughs> Yeah. I can't imagine telling God that, but that's what he did. He called that place a breach against us. That God had done wrong. And then God showed him. He says, don't you know, when you go back to the word, that it tells you how to that's do right. it? Yeah. 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 David, go back to the word. Yeah. Find out what the Bible says to know how this is supposed to be done. That it's not to be on a, on a cart. I don't care if they're, they're a good oxen and a brand new cart. I don't care. That's not the way that I wrote it down. Right. It may look good to you, right. but it's not the way I wrote it down. That's that right. those priests that have been sanctified, washed and cleansed would run those poles through the loops and that they would carry that thing. And that's the only way it was to be transported was by them. So he went back and he got those priests all cleansed and, and got them all right. And they brought their, their staffs and they put it through the rings of the ark and they began to carry it back into Jerusalem. And David was so excited to bring the ark back. He was just, wow. And about partway, I don't know if he did this at the beginning, but man, every seven steps he would stop. Yeah. Right. And they would offer up sacrifice. Yeah. I don't know how long it took them to get that thing back. Yeah. Seven steps. Let's stop. Let's offer up another sacrifice. Yeah. And after a while, the excitement's growing in David. He's right. getting closer to Jerusalem. And as he's getting closer, man, he, every time they stop and they offer up a sacrifice, David's up there. He's worshiping God. He's dancing before the Lord. And uh -huh. go another seven steps. Yeah. Offer up another sacrifice. Whoa! Glory! Hallelujah! After a while, he's getting a little overheated like we were doing these kids' songs before service tonight, or today. And, uh, and man, those kingly robes are going, and, and now he's just down to his the undergarment part of his, out, his what he wore. And, and, man, he's just out there, and he's just worshiping God for all his work. And up in the top of the palace, yeah. yes. looking through a narrow window, looking down at the king, and looking at him and criticizing him for the way that he was worshiping and praising God. Uh -huh. Didn't the king make a fool of himself today? Yeah. Well, maybe you in your eyes, but I think my Jesus loved him. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Stop worrying. That's right. Don't worry about the person standing next to you or behind you what they may think. How many of you are safe today? You know what? Just worship God. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, I'm not trying to please you or you or you or you or anybody else. I'm, I worship the way that I worship and praise God the way that I praise God because I think my Jesus likes it. Because it's in the Word. Hallelujah. You know what? I've thought about this so much. We need to stand up and make sure that every altar service has an impact Amen. in our lives and whoever else comes up. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's not a time for us to be to visiting or walking in and out or, or doing it. Listen, man, we're here to do God's business. Yeah. 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 Amen. All of heaven is looking down. Yeah. Is observing, waiting for one person to repent. Right. Right. Yeah. So that all of heaven can just explode in worship yeah. Yeah. over one individual who says, God, I've got to change my life. Yeah. And we're casual. Yeah. We sometimes walk in and out and oh, God, we're busy doing stuff and blah, 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 all the rest of it. And all of heaven is waiting 
waiting in anticipation mm -hmm. for one individual to come and say, I want to change my life. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the time we need to stand up and defend. When we do God's business, nothing is going to take us away from that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad I'm with all of you Amen. in Port Alberta. I believe God put us together here for a reason. We're going to stand shoulder to shoulder. We're going to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. We're not going to compromise on the things that God has shown us to be important in our lives. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. We're going to make sure that when we come into the service, we're, man, we're going to worship God, praise God, love God. And when altar call comes, we're going to come and do God's business. We're going to pray. We're going to seek the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray with people, with each other. Man, if you know that there's a brother and sister that's struggling with something, why don't you just go and pray through with them? Rather than hoping and praying that they will do it from somewhere else, just come together and pray through. You never know. You kneeling beside somebody and praying through to the Holy Ghost might just be the catalyst that they need to pray through to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How to end this service? Well, let's just close our eyes for a moment, shall we? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What do you feel like doing in the Holy Ghost right now? As the musicians find a chorus to sing, I want you to just follow whatever God's moving on you to do. If you feel to come to this altar and repent, this altar is open for you to do so. But do what God wants you to do. <laughs> do whatever God wants you to do right now. Heal after the Holy Ghost. Let Him speak to your heart right now. Hallelujah.